Everybody's there. I'll just read the last three verses here in this chapter. Um, it says, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then, then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Let's just begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for tonight, Lord. Just thank you that uh, stuff you got in safely from Arizona. Praise God for the people who got saved today, Lord. Um, just pray for the preaching tonight, that we get something out of it and just have a good time. And just to enjoy each other's fellowship. And we pray all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, tonight I'm going to preach on compassion. All right. <laughs> I told Richie this, he kind of laughed at me. <laughs> but no, this is not going to be a Joel Olstein or a... Uh, Paul Washer sermon or anything like that. But the reason I want to uh, preach on this is that I was kind of seeing this in, in the Bible and Jesus, he, he always seems to be, they, they would talk about him having compassion. Compassion on the multitude because of their illnesses and sicknesses, he'd go heal them. But this is a great passage right here, and I'm sure most of you have heard it, where he's looking at the multitude and he says, uh, they're scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. And that's what we have tonight, or in this country right now, is we don't have any shepherds. We don't yeah. have any preachers that are standing up for the Word of God, except for right. a couple that we have. We have uh, Pastor Anderson, we have Jason Hemstead that just started Amen. the church. And we, uh, we, we have young men that are getting ready to start churches if they just get married and have kids. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, that... We're missing the compassion in the world. We have preachers that do not have compassion. Yep. And the thing that I want to talk about tonight is compassion and soul winning. The compassion and how you soul win and how you win people to Christ. I saw too many times uh, in back of this church that we're going to this liberal church that they don't they don't preach the gospel right. That's right. Like they, they, they'll tell you you need to receive Jesus Christ in your heart. And that's how you get saved. The Methodists say that. The Presbyterians say that. Everybody says that. Yeah. You know, the Catholics will say that you need to receive Jesus Christ in your heart. That's right. But that's not the gospel. That's not how you explain how someone gets saved. Because we're living in America where everybody's heard of Jesus. Everybody's heard that, you know, Jesus is how you get to heaven. But, you know, we need to explain to him how exactly you get to heaven. And at this church that we went to, my good friend Trey Randolph went up forward to get saved. And he told me about this. That I haven't even been there yet. But he's, he told me on the phone that he got saved. So I'm like, praise God. You know, we, uh, that's great. I, I actually witnessed to him before this happened. And uh, I, I just wanted to go up to him and, like, talk to him about it, make sure that he knew how to get saved and that they talked to him about it, right? And I, and I went up to him at his house and, uh, you know, I asked him, you know, if he was to die today, if he knew for sure he'd go to heaven. And he said, he said yes, but it's kind of like a hesitant yes. Like, I don't know if he just thought I was drilling him or something. But then I, I nailed it down and said, what if you committed suicide? What if you just blew your brains out right now? And he said, he's like, well, I don't know about that. You know, it's hogwash. You know, right. he goes up to get saved. Guess who was the person that, that gave him the gospel? The assistant pastor of the church. If the assistant pastor, which the pastor probably wouldn't have done a better job himself because he's a, he's a lordship salvation, yep. repentant sin of uh, right. Calvinist that he is, that he would not give him the gospel right way anyway. So, you know, we have, that's the kind of preachers that we have. Thank God I got to give him the gospel. He got saved right there when I talked to him. You know, but he knows for sure right now that he'd go to heaven. But that's the kind of preachers that we got. You know, in this church that, they, even the church we're going to now, they hate to say it, but they have the people that are in there, you know, that's how they're giving the gospel. You know, they'll say that it's a gift, that it's just by Jesus Christ alone, but that's where they stop. You know, they don't, they don't go into the fact that you know, eternal life means it's forever and that it'll never end. And that's what we're getting off of. And Jesus Christ had compassion on the multitude. Yep. And let me tell you, these people do not have compassion when they don't tell you how to get to heaven right. right. You know, we, right. And we, we're not playing church up here. We're not just playing Christians. You know, we, we go out, we win the souls, and I don't care if it takes two hours to get someone saved. We do it right. We do it right. because we care about them. You know, if it was your father, if it was your mother, if it was your brother or sister... 
would you just give them the gospel and just say, pray this prayer? Or would you make sure they knew, knew how exactly how to get to heaven? You know, it, it fires me up because I know people that I, that I love and want to see get saved that if they die right now, they go to hell. Yeah. And if I, if I had one of those preachers going up there, and I love how Justin said it, he said, if I saw one of my friends or somebody going up to the front, if I brought them to church, he said, I'd be going right down the aisle with them to give them the gospel. Because there's no way I'd ever trust anybody else. And there's only a couple preachers in this world that I even trust to give the gospel to anybody besides the people that are standing in this room. So, uh, I have some verses I want to kind of show with this. Um, in uh, 1 John 3.16, it says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because, Christ, because He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. It says, But whoso hath this world's good, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwell the, or see if his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwell the love of God in him. Good. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. You know, that was the compassion he had for us. It even, even says in Acts 3, you know, after his passion, you know, he was seen of the disciples and everything. You know, he had compassion on us that he died for us. That's the love of God, that he sent his only begotten son and died for our sins, and that he's the savior of the world. And it says since he died for us, if we want to show our love to everybody else, we should be willing to die for them. You know, that's not the mentality that we have today in most of these churches. You think, like, just tell them to bow their head and say a prayer so you can get all these numbers coming in and not get them saved and just so we could have 50 people saved at the end of the Sunday, you know, and, and so you just look good and everything else. But we need to have compassion. You know, if I go two weeks without getting anybody saved, you know, it sucks. I would love to see people get saved, but I'm not going to just have people saying a prayer when I know they don't understand the gospel. You know, you know, you know and that's what these people do, you know, and even if they don't understand, they'll be like, well, I'll just say the prayer. You know, let, you'll make them feel better. You know, it's basically just they're just trying to make themselves feel better. And you know, that's that's wicked. That's right. I'm that's gonna right. say it right now, it is wicked as hell to just say have someone say a prayer and to make yourself feel like you're getting someone saved. Amen. Because right. what that does, on top of the fact of them not getting saved, it gives them a false sense of security. Sure. You know, these people are thinking, well, I said a prayer, so I'm going to heaven. Or you know, they, they if someone else comes up to them, they'll be like, well, I already received Christ in my heart. You know, and it just makes it that much harder for for someone that's a true soul winner to come out and give them the gospel. So, in Jude, and I'm just going to wrap up with this. Actually, I want to show you that the difference between, or how this is kind of meshed together, mercy and compassion. Um, and uh, Romans 9, 15. And I'm kind of jumping around on it. But, I've got all this stuff running through my head right now. But, uh, Romans 9, 15. It says, For you say to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Now, you can do a lot with this, this verse right here, but the thing I want you to see is, you know, mercy and compassion are always usually, like, used together. You know, Jesus Christ had compassion on the multitude, therefore he showed mercy on them. You know, it's kind of like simultaneous how this works. And I'll show you some other verses that kind of work that into play. You know, but we're, you know, his mercy is how we're saved too. You know, it says in uh, Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Yep. And, you know, Mark and Rosenthal can put that in his pipe and smoke it because this guy teaches that in the Old Testament you're saved by mercy and now we're saved by grace. Hmm. Now, I'm sorry, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yeah, it says right. we're saved by, according to his mercy in the Bible, of course we're saved by grace. It's all the same. You know, this yeah. dispensation garbage that people teach is just ridiculous. Yeah. It just shows how much they don't know the Bible and how much they don't even read the Bible. They can go back to the Greek all they want, but they're morons. They're fools yeah. in the Bible. So, yeah. so, if you go to Jude, and I'll just end with this. Jude chapter 1. <laughs> Verse uh, 21, we'll start there. This kind of just wraps it all up into one bundle. So basically, we need to have compassion. Jesus Christ says we need laborers. We need people to go out to the harvest and, and labor. You know, the, it, the, it's basically ripe. All we need is just pick it off, off there. And no one's doing it, so, I mean, we definitely have enough to go around. I mean, people need to get saved. They're everywhere that need to get saved. 
And uh, in Jude uh, 21, it says, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Okay, so there's mercy again. You know, he showed compassion, so he's given us mercy because he showed compassion. He, he died on the cross for our sins. He rose again the third day. And then right after that, it kind of explains what it's talking about here with this, this eternal life. It says, And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment <clears throat> spotted by the flesh. Okay? So if you're going to have compassion on somebody, you're going to tell them about hell. Yep. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, you know, hell is something that seems like no one ever talks about anymore because it, it offends somebody. Yep. You know, Who's having the compassion? When you have someone in a burning building, and the one person comes in there, they don't know they're in a burning building, and they bring them out kicking and screaming, the person might may not like you for it, but who has compassion? That person or the other person on the outside that's just saying, oh, you're fine, don't worry about that's it. That's right. Well, I'll get there in the end. You know, that person that goes to the fire says, save, save him with fear, some, and some uh, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the God inspired by the flesh. Good. So... We, the people that have compassion are the people going out, knocking the doors, getting the doors slammed in their face, having people hate them. You know, it says, woe unto them when all men shall speak well of you, Jesus right. said to us. Yeah. So if people, if everybody likes you, you're not right with God. Amen. Yeah, that's, right. People, right. that's right. If you don't have people coming down your door and telling you that, that you're a heretic, you're wrong, then, then you're just not right with God because you're not telling people what you believe. Right. So if you tell them what the Word of God says, they're going to hate you for it. That's right. Someone's going to hate you for it. And thank God some people will love you for it, too. Amen. You know, and that, that's basically the sermon I wanted to give you tonight. And uh, we need to have compassion. Not like the Joel Steen, happy face, prosperity, garbage preaching, the faggot that he is. You know, that, that's, that's garbage. It's not what the Bible teaches about compassion. Yep. Jesus Christ had compassion that he was nailed to a cross, that he was scourged uh, 40 times, saved one. That he, he was put on the cross, the sins of the world, every single one of my sins was put upon him. Right. And he went to hell for three days to pay for those sins yeah. and rose again the third day. That's not some little faggot Joel steam message that we got here. This is a man, this is, a, this is God, who died for our sins and had compassion on us. And we need to have compassion for the world. So, this is in the world of prayer. Jesus, I just thank you for tonight. Lord, thank you for the time to preach. Um, just thank you for everybody here. And, Pray that someone maybe got something out of this, just that maybe in your word, the scriptures that were read. Uh, Lord, we love you and pray all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.